Hello everybody, it's your boy Tap Mana, and today we have big announcements, we have big news. We, uh, before I get into announcements though, I just wanna take a moment and say thank you to everyone who's been joining me. Thank you so much for believing in me. Thank you for leaving comments, likes, just watching the video, giving me your input because I really do try to listen. This channel is growing and um, it's, it's, it's a big day for me to say we've, we've gotten over 100 subscribers. And as promised, uh, I have a Send a Car Rising set booster box, including a box topper from the set that I'm gonna be giving away to three lucky winners. All I ask for you to be a part of this, I'm gonna explain how this giveaway works, but first I'm gonna ask to be a part of this giveaway. You go ahead and leave a comment on this video, leave a like, share the video on any social media, and then uh, if you're not already subscribed, please be subscribed. And these winners will participate in a mini competition based on the converted mana cost of the rares or mythics that they pull from this set, not including the list card. Whoever has the highest total casting cost will receive the box topper opened. So winners will be announced on February 11th to be participating in this uh, box giveaway. So I'll be choosing those winners and then doing that giveaway right there. May fortune be forever in your favor. I kind of burped if you didn't hear that. I hope that's, I'm not going to edit that out. That was kind of funny. But anyways, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, this is just, I, I want to be able to keep doing milestones. Uh, we have a personal deck build that I'm going to be showing. It's, it's going to be my equipment theme deck. Now, I'm heavy on tribal. Most of my other decks are tribal. So you're going to expect to see that. But I wanted to give you something different this week other than just another tribal. So... I'm going to be giving you my equipment deck. Now, ironically enough, it's half tribal anyways. So I just can't get away with, uh, get away from it. I can't wait to show you this deck right now. And then we have another big announcement at the end of the video, as well as I'm going to be announcing the winner of the, of my other personal deck build video in which I was offering six personal or six draft booster blister packs from Crimson Val. So I'm going to be announcing the winner of this of these packs at the end of this video. Yes, yes, we got a lot going on, folks. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the personal deck here. Um, again, one more time, thank you to everyone. I'll be explaining the, the rules of the giveaway again at the end of the video when I'm announcing the other announcements. So thank you so much. Let's get right into it. We have <clears throat> Hold the Line featuring Akiri, Line Slinger, and Arden Intrepid. Archaeologist. Let me go ahead and adjust this camera for us. We can get knee deep in that. Let me get this in here. I saw another YouTuber do this and I thought it was cool. So I thought I'd add my own little thing there in the background just to kind of keep it fresh. I'm putting that in there. If that's if that's just annoying, I'll take it off. Let me know in the comments. Um, I try to do fan service where I can while still doing my own thing. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm experimenting. But yes, uh, we have a high synergy equipment here. Uh, this is not so much about uh, getting any certain combos in. It's really just about getting a crazy amount of equipment on a creature and then overwhelming our opponents with it. So we have a Curie Lion Slinger with First Strike and Vigilance, 0-3. It has a plus one, plus zero for each artifact you control and then partner. And then we have uh, the partner Arden Intrepid Archaeologist, which is... At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may attach any number of auras and equipment... You control on target permanent or player. So that's just freaking genius in my opinion. Like, come on. That's freaking awesome. Her bold movements are anchored in the careful precision of each rope. With the right tools, even the sky is within reach. They're just slinging the lines, holding the lines, holding it down. Okay, let's get right into the decks. Or into the deck. What am I saying? It's because I'm looking at the partners and thinking multiple. We're going to go over the... First, we're going to go over the mana base. Then we're going to go over mana ramp, utility, removal, and then creatures. And then we'll go over announcement time. So um, in this deck, we have, I believe, nine red mana. Yep, nine red basic. Then we have 11 basic planes. I didn't put the fancy planes in here yet. I'm still actually working on upgrading that. And then we should have 13 non-basic, making a total of 33 total lands for this deck. It's just red and white, as you see. It's... Um, a commander deck that I'm actually going to be playing with friends tomorrow and a friend group that I haven't even played uh, commander with yet. So um, let's get let's dive right into the non-basic land and then we'll just step it up from there. Um, 
as usual, I hope everyone's having a great week so far. I missed y'all. Uh, Thriving Heath. We have Thriving Heath enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, choose a color other than white. You're going to choose red in this case since it's already starting in white. Then we have Flagstone, Flagstones of Trocare. Trocare, I never say it right. Um, but you, it comes in untapped. It's a legendary land that gives you white. But when it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you may search your library for a planes card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and shuffle your library. So I like that little bag up there if someone's trying to do um, some land removal for whatever reason, and you can somehow control that. Then we have a Cur Keep. This is just to create a distraction because it's an, also another legendary land that you can create for untapped mana, but you can tap a red and a colorless. Um, and this deck itself doesn't have too much draw ability in it, so I figured I need something to just, you know, poop out when I have extra mana just laying there at the end of someone's turn. Then we have Sunbaked Canyon. I'm willing to pay that life to get that mana if I'm doing it right or draw that card, since, like I mentioned, we don't have too much draw ability here. Then we have an Inspiring Vantage. It's uh, tapped. It's one of the tap lands where, or I don't know how to name it or what's the actual name, but someone will correct me in the comments, I'm sure. Enter the battlefield tapped unless you control two or fewer lands, and it's a red or a white. Then we have a Temple of Triumph, which is personally one of my favorite red and white lands because it lets you scry one. I don't like that it let, comes into the battlefield tapped, but it is what it is, right? They got to do something to these lands. Um, Sun pa Sundown Pass, which is from more than uh, from Midnight Hunt, I believe. It enters battlefield tapped unless you control two or more other lands for red or white. And then Evolving Wilds, which is one of our fetches. And another fetch which we have is Arid Mesa. So that's from... Hold on, let's go back and just appreciate this beautiful art on Evolving Wilds. Yeah, by Izzy. Izzy, thank you. The Eldrazi may be ruthless, but Zendikar is relentless. Let's not forget that, folks. We have our Arid Mesa, and then moving on to one of the best lands in the game, Command Tower. But this is an equipment deck, so we had to add the Urza's Tower... Urza's Mine and Urza's Power Plant combination. I don't have the old one. Wish I had the old one. So if someone has an old one, maybe shoot me an email and, I don't know, maybe we can do tradesies. Let me know. But that's our non-basic land. Hope you guys like what I'm doing so far with the synergy on the land. I didn't have everything the greatest available, but this is one of my... Um, not the most powerful deck, but it's still high synergy. We're moving on to Mana Ramp here. So we have our Boros Signet. Arcane Signet, which is one I think one of my favorites right there because it's just untapped. Marble Diamond, Fire Diamond because I've this was an older deck that I built and I had them. Soul Ring, look at that, look at that Commander sign right there. Twenty seventeen, tell me about that. Twenty fifteen, I don't even know. We have our Jeweled Lotus uh, Proxy here. This is one that was given to me by a buddy of mine, but I do have one. It's the fancy one that I want to get graded, and I will be using the proxy on this. It's the only proxy I use. I don't feel bad, so don't give me crap about it. Um, but yeah, that's my Jolt Lotus uh, thing in there. And then we have a Mox Opal to get us some more mana ramp here. It's uh, Metalcraft. I love it. This one's a Double Masters version, but I wish I, I wish I really had the original version of that. That would be really cool. And then we have a Thought Vessel because we... Don't necessarily need no maximum hand size. It wouldn't hurt, but we really just want to be able to keep uh, ramping. And if anyone tried to do anything funny with trying to give us a whole bunch of cards all at once, we can maintain that. Then we have Circle of Loyalty to manage uh, half of the tribal that I mentioned. Like, again, this isn't so much about the tribal. It started out as that, but I realized I just cared more about how the equipments worked uh, in, in their attack phases and what they what what they provided Um how strong they were, and the casting cost. Uh, this deck was meant to keep up with buddies, but also still have a good time. So Circle of Loyalty was thrown in here just because it will cost less for each Knight of Control, and I expect to have a few out if I do have this, hopefully. Uh, whenever you do, uh, whenever you cast a Legendary spell, create a 2-2 White Knight creature token with Vigilance, and then you can pretty much poop them out with uh, three colorless and one white, and then you can tap it for that ability. But it does give your creatures a plus one, plus one, which I thought was cool. And the fact that it can be cheaper if you have those knights out. Then we have Fiery Emancipation. If a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals triple that damage to permanent or player. Now, we've gone past um, Mana Ramp. We're going right into Utility now. I, I forgot to mention that. I apologize. So 
Right now, we should be on the utility phase. We've gone through mana base, mana ramp. We're on the utility. Utility starts off with Circle of Loyalty, then Fire Emancipation, and the Planeswalkers, which are part of utility, in my opinion. So, uh, Nahiri is going to be able to give us abilities to uh, exile target enchantments, tapped artifact, or tapped creatures, which is what I really care about, or the discard and draw card, just in case, because again, struggling here with being able to have card advantage. Uh, but I did throw a, a couple remedies, so hopefully they pop out. Uh, search your library for an artifact or creature card, put it onto the battlefield, and shuffle your library. It gains haste. Return it to your hand at the beginning of your next end step is its eight drop, but it starts off with four. And then we have, that's the Harbinger, but we have Nahiri Heir of the Ancients, which is pretty cool. I like it personally more than the Harbinger. It gives you a plus one ability where you create core warrior creature tokens and you can attach equipment. You can you can attach any equipment you control to it. Or you can reveal the top six cards of your library for minus two and reveal a warrior or equipment tar from among them. Then put it into your hand and the rest in the bottom of your library order, which is kind of meh for me. I've really never used that personally just because I'd really, you know, I, 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 I'm going to trust my shuffle. And then Nahiri, Heir of the Ancients, is a minus three ability of... Uh, or Nahiri, the minus three ability is it deals damage to target creature, planeswalker, equal to twice the number of equ equipment you control. This is the one I want to save up for. That's the ability because because you're gonna you're gonna really see how many equipment in here and just trust trust when I say trust the process. Uh, more utility is gonna be more preventative action right here. So we have uh, safe passage, and for safe passage, it is a higher casting cost than other preventative spells that I could have put in here, like um, dawn charm, uh, things like that. Um, but this this one is prevent all damage, not just combat damage. It's prevent all damage to uh, that could be dealt to you and creatures you control this turn. I've busted this out and literally just I I've heard arguments of why I shouldn't have this in here, but this is my one of my favorite cards from back in the day. I'm gonna keep playing it, and then we have Holy Day, which is prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn, and that's just uh, for the one drop right there, which I thought was great. So the last portion that we have for utility here will be uh, Triumphant Reckoning. Return all artifact, enchantment, and planeswalker cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So if someone decided to board wipe or destroy all non-land permanents, for example, um, then you're going to be able to play this. It's it's going to be later in the game, hopefully, and you do have the mana. And the mana ramp, I think, is strong enough for, to allow this. Uh, but this can be pretty devastating if you bust this out on the next turn after the removal spells are played. So speaking of removal, which brings us to the removal spells. What we have here for removal, let's go ahead and highlight Akiri and Arden holding it down. There are commanders here. Um, we have Hour of Revelation. I was just speaking about destroying all non-land permanents. So Hour of Revelation um, is from Hour of Amonkhet, I believe. Um Amonkhet. Hour of Revelation costs three less to cast if there are ten or more non-land permanents on the battlefield. They could destroy all non-land permanents. So this is definitely going to wipe your side of the board too, but if you have Triumphant Reckoning, this is not going to hurt at all. And you can even maybe... Um, I mean, you're not going to get your creatures back, but you have low casting cost art, uh, commanders that you're going to be able to bust out by the time you play this. So Unless if people are removing your, art, uh, your commanders, seeing the the devastation that you're going to uh, play. Next, we have Wind of Abandoned. Winds of Abandoned. Exile each target creature you don't control. Or exile target creature you don't control. For each creature exile this way, its controller searches their library for a basic land card. Those players put those cards onto the battlefield tapped and shuffle their libraries. Overload is we're going to change it from exile each creature you don't control. So, we're board wiping the rest of the board, but we're exiling those creatures. So those commanders are going to be able to go to the command zone. But those creatures that they have there, they're not going to be able to get back. Let them have the mana ramp. If those creatures were devastating enough for you to want to exile them, this is why we have this. And the overload cost isn't terrible. So I thought this was a nice change for a board wipe. Not everyone's playing the wins, so I thought I'd just throw that in there. Um, we have Wing Shards, which is target player sacrifices an attacking creature. This is for Storm. This has a Storm. This is a Storm cost casting cost. So you definitely want to play this against someone who's playing their main phase uh, pretty strong first, and then attacking heavily with creatures. Then we have Armed Response. Um, armed Response deals damage to target attacking creature you control to number of equipment you control. So I thought that was cool, considering we're gonna have a lot of equipment. Um, and the art in this just looked really neat. This is by Doug Chaffee. Um, I just thought it was really cool. I mean, I know there's other cards, but why not throw this one in there, right? Then we have a nice uh, 
full art path to exile which is the final removal spell if you want to let people exile and then gain life i believe is what it is is it gain life or search for a card i think it's search for a card but let's go ahead and get uh, right into creatures <clears throat> and then you guys let me know what you think i think it's going to start off with knights and then it's going to go to non-knights so we have Adeline, Resplendent Cathar from Midnight Hunt, I believe. Uh, Vigilance, and then this is the power and the ah, it's a its power is equal to number of creatures you control. And whenever you attack for each opponent, create a one create a one one white cre human creature token that's tapped and attacking that player or planeswalker they control. So I thought that was cool. Just starting off, and you're gonna see that the theme is knights for the tribal side of this. Uh, we have a claimed contender. When it enters the battlefield, if you control another knight, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a knight or a equipment or legendary artifact from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest onto the bottom of your library in your graveyard. This is a really neat card considering we have a lot of legendary stuff going on in here, or at least as far as the artifacts go. And equipment. Knight of Old Banalia. Uh, I believe I said that right. This is a spend... I'll only really play this for a suspend cost. And then when it enters the battlefield, other creatures you control get a plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. A regular cohort. When a regular cohort enters the battlefield, it's a changeling creature, so it's not technically a knight, but because it's changeling, it's going to fall into that category. Um, but when it enters the battlefield, tap to create... Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 two -two colorless shapeshifter token with changeling. So you're just creating more knights, essentially, with this uh, creature. Where fickle form meets lasting loyalty. Adriana, Captain of the Guard, is our legendary creature, Human Knight. It's a melee 4-4, four, four, and other creatures you can control have melee. So whenever they attack, it'll get a plus one, plus one each turn. Blah. It'll get a plus one, plus one until the end of the turn for each opponent you attacked with the creature this combat. I've actually had this uh, come out, and it's actually really cool. If a creature has multiple instances of melee, each trigger in, uh each trigger separately. That's ridiculous. I didn't read that part until just now because it's never come up. And then we have Armored Sky Hunter, which I felt was a staple for this deck. It's a Cat Knight, 3-3 three, three flying. Whenever it attacks, look at the top six cards of your library. You may put an aura or equipment card from among them onto the battlefield. If an equipment is put onto the battlefield this way, you, you may attach it to your creature you control. Uh, wow, that's crazy. Uh, put the rest of those cards on the bottom of your library in random order. I don't know why it sounds surprised. I've played this card plenty of times. It's just so good. And Knight Exemplar, which was given to me as a gift by a friend. They knew my uh, want and desire to make a really cool knight deck. So they gave me a Knight Exemplar as a gift. I thought it was really neat. It's a 2-2 first strike. Other knight creatures you control get a plus one, plus one, and are indestructible, just giving us that protection that we need. Then we have White Knight, which I threw in here more for flavor than anything. It's our first strike, 2-2, protection from black for two white. I thought it was good enough for the cost. It's a two drop. You're getting protection from a whole color and it's first strike. It's going to throw in with the synergy that we have going on here. Then we have a Pure Steel Paladin from uh, doubles, uh, Double Masters. Whenever, equ whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. Then it also has Metalcraft similar to the Mox Opal that we had in there. Um, Metalcraft equipment you control have zero as long as you have three or more artifacts. This card is going to be what you want to remove if you're playing against me when playing this equipment deck because the equipment that we're going to be playing is going to be pretty devastating, as you'll notice. Next, we have a Mirror Entity, which is another changeling that we have. It's going to be able to be all creature types, which includes knights. And if anyone has slivers, goblins, or whatever, and they're playing Coat of Arms, this will be a nice remedy to be able to get a presence on the battlefield. Plus, it has X. Uh, pay X until the end of the turn. Creatures you control have a base power and toughness of XX and gain all creature types. So for a three drop, I thought that was necessary to put in there. Plus it's time shifted. Next we have a Valiant Knight, which is a four drop. Other knights you control get a plus one, plus one, and then you can pay three and two, and then two white, and then knights you control gain double strike until the end of the turn. Um, halfway through this deck, everyone, I hope you're having a great time watching this. I hope you're having a great day. Um, trying to keep it consistent, trying to keep it smooth here for us. Moving on, we have a uh, Crusading Knight, which is another protection from Black 2-2, two, two, but it gets a plus one, plus one for each swamp your opponents control. So hopefully someone's playing a Yawgmoth or a Tomb, uh, Tomb of Urborg, I believe it's what it's called. Um, but um, yeah, that, that land that makes all other lands swamps. So that's a good card to put in there. Then we have a Paladin of, Paladin of Atonement, which I thought was a cool Vampire Knight at the beginning of each upkeep if you lost life. 
last turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And when it dies, you gain life equal to its toughness. So it's not like you're really losing it, you're getting it back. Uh, Knight of White, what, Knight of the White Orchard, it's a 2 2 first strike knight. When it enters the battlefield, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you may search for a planes and put it into the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Another gift from a friend, Fervent Champion, from Throne of Eldrain. It's a 1 1 first strike. Whenever Fervent Champion attacks, another target attacking knight you control gets a plus 1 plus 0. Equip abilities. You activate that target for event champion. It costs three less to activate. Excellent one drop. That person knows my affinity for my one for the one drops. This is an alternative uh, commander that I put in this deck. Honestly, if I just feel like changing it up, it's a two drop Rayav Master Smith. Whenever a creature you control that's enchanted or equipped attacks, that creature gains double strike until the end of the turn. This brings down the power level a whole level as far as commander goes, in my opinion, by changing this out, um, making it more about flavor at that point. So I put that right here with these fellas. <clears throat> now we're off uh, away from our tribal cards. We're really more about the synergy and before we get into the uh, equipment aspect of this deck. So right now we have our Mirror Smith. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you can pay one. If you do, put a plus one plus, or not a plus one plus one, put a one one colorless mirror artifact creature token onto the battlefield, which I thought was great, because it doesn't even come into play tapped. It's just out there, ready to adapt. Then we have Mirror Adapter, which is gets a plus one, plus one for each equipment attached to it for three drop, and it is only a one, one. I thought it was interesting enough, at the very least, to be able to try to equip it and use it in battle, see how it turns out. I think I've only gotten to the battlefield once, but I, I haven't equipped it to its full capability. Uh, next, we have Halvar, God of Battle. Uh, creatures you control that are enchanted or equipped have double strike. At the beginning of each combat, you may attach target or, or equipment attached to a creature you control to a target creature you control. So you can pretty much switch things around. I don't use the equipment side of this, but I'll go ahead and show it because I know some of you might be curious. The other side of this card is Sword of the Realms. It's, uh, equip it's an equipment, a legendary equipment. So I could search for this card in this way and put it into my hand and then play the other side of it if I wanted. <coughs> Pardon. Sword of the Realms gives a creature plus two, plus oh, and vigilance, and then whenever it dies, return it to its owner's hand, and it only costs two to equip, which is one white and one colorless. But I'm leaving it on the god side, I like that. And then we have our other god in here, which is Toroth, God of Fury, and the, just, the flavor of this is ridiculous. This is a showcase version, too, as well as Halvar. This is a 5-4 trample god, and whenever a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls is dealt excess non-combat damage, Toroth deals damage equal to that excess to any other uh, target other than that permanent. So this, in combination with Fiery Emancipation in here, is just going to make for a devastating um, excess attack. Next, we have Imperial Recruiter, which is a 1-1. Uh, I thought it was a staple to put into any commander deck with uh, red, if you have the ability to put this card. It's um, whenever it enters the battlefield, search your library for a creature card with power 2 or less, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and show for your library. So for the million different types of knights we have in here or different cards, I thought this was a necessary card to put in here. Um, for the power 2 or less, but I just thought that was great. Taj Nar, Swordsmith, is our next card cat soldier when it comes into play you may pay x if you do search a library for an equipment card with converted cast of x uh, converted mana cost of x or less and put that card into play then shuffle your library this was ridiculous and the fact that this is just an uncommon wow a two three cat soldier i mean it is an uncommon it's it's four drop i guess that's the downfall it's four drop but that's freaking awesome in my opinion um, I think it's also the synergy and other cards in here that where equipment come into play, you can just automatically equip, equip them or equip them during a certain phase. Venerable War Singer. This is a 3-3 Spirit Cleric. I think it's the ability that it gives this giant paragraph. I'll go over it. It's Vigilance Trample. That's pretty cool, but what's really cool about it is that whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may return target creature card with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield where X is the amount of damage this creature dealt to that player which i thought that was interesting i was like well if i equip it and make it unblockable or equip it and give it uh further abilities then it, it can only mean goodness for me if i have any creatures in the graveyard sarah ascendant this isn't anything but good if you can get this out on the first turn because it's a one drop one one life link and as long as you have 30 or more life it gets a plus five plus five and flying so you'd automatically have a six six flying life link 
on turn one if you can get this out. This is a pure advantage card. I had to throw this in there, just kind of flex on them and then throw down some dirty if I needed to. Next for the card advantage that we do require is another one drop artifact creature. It's Esper Sentinel. With some of the artifact search abilities in this deck, we're going to be looking for this card definitely. Um, whenever an opponent casts their first non-creature spell each turn, draw a card unless that player plays X, where X is Esper Sentinel's power. So maybe you can equip this, give it some extra power, make sure you get that draw in, and then you'd be safe to get that advantage. Next uh, utility uh, somewhat advantage is Oswald Oswald Fiddlebender. You have Magical Tinkering, which is you can tap for white and then sacrifice an artifact. Search your library for an artifact card with mana value plus one, then put it onto the battlefield. But you can only do it on your turn as a sorcery, so only between your main phases, not at source, uh, not at instant speed or at anyone else's turn. So now we're on the equipments, folks. Strap in. This is my favorite part. I, I save this for last. This is what the whole deck is about, right? So... I like to goad people. We're going to play Bloodthirsty Blade. This gives a equipped creature plus two, plus so, and it goads them. And it makes it so that they attack each combat if able, anyone and anything except you if able. So um, you can pay one to attach it to target creature and opponent controls. But you, again, only on your turn as a sorcery speed. All right. Yeah, I'll just put this on with the creatures since we're going to be shuffling it up and then doing a draw seven at the end of the turn or at the end of this video when I do the final announcement and announce the winner of the giveaway for our six Crimson Vow pack winners. If you're still with me, thank you so much for watching. I know it's been kind of slow. I've been trying to keep it up, trying to keep it smooth. Next, we have a Mace of the Valiant. This is from Throne of Eldraine. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each charge counter on it. And then whenever a creature enters the battlefield under my control... Put a charge counter on Mace of the Valiant. I thought that was good enough to put out here. Then we have a Dark Steel Plate. It's a three drop whenever Dark Steel Plate... Blah! Dark Steel Plate is indestructible and equipped creature is indestructible. So it's just protection for that creature, really. Then we have a Dowsing Dagger. This is a combination of our equipment and Mana Ram. So what happens is when, in, when it enters the battlefield, target opponent is going to create two zero two plant creature tokens with Defender. Equipped creature gets a plus two, plus one. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you may transform it. Now, it's a two drop for equipped two, but it transforms into the Lotus Veil. And you can tap it to add three of any one color to your mana pool. Wow, just freaking awesome. The pirates had ventured into the interior for treasure. They found something greater. One of my favorite equipment in here for sure. My favorite will be the last ones for sure. You guys will see why. Then we have Lightning Greaves, which uh, is a staple in most commander decks that I've seen. It's uh, equipped creature has haste and shroud, and it's a zero cost equip, uh, which is amazing. Then we have Blinding Powder. Uh, this was neat. This is from the Kamigawa sets. Uh, equipped creature has unattached Blinding Powder. Blinding Powder prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to the, this creature this turn. So it's if you really just for some reason, couldn't get that attack and something happened, they played an instant, you can go ahead and just unequip it and you'll be safe to to continue on with your attack phase or your second combat or your second main phase. Next, we have Cauldra Complete. It's a the heaviest casting cost item in this entire deck. It is a legendary artifact equipment for seven. It's a living equipment, so it does come out as a creature um, or as a germ creature token, I believe. Uh, it has indestructible when it equipped creature gets a plus five plus five first strike trample indestructible haste and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player exile that creature just complete devastation someone actually threw this at me i didn't have one i actually opened another one but i was happy to have this one so i put the one that my friend gave me into this then we have swift foot boots another staple uh, equip creature has hex proof and haste but he has a one uh one equipped cost and it's a two drop skull clamp because we want to draw cards and we'll have tokens. It's a plus one, minus one. Whenever equipped creature dies, draw two cards. And it's literally a one drop for equip one. Such a good card. Another of one of my favorite cards in here, you guys have heard me say that like 10 times now, is Whisper Silk Cloak. I was mentioning this talking about unblockable. Equipped creature is unblockable. Equipped creature is sh has shroud. And if you're going to be going in any order, you want to equip this last with the amount of artifacts or artifact equipment that we'll have out because it does have shroud and you won't be able to interact with it after that. Next is Sunforger. I thought it was great because it's red and white. It's a three drop. Equip creature gets a plus four, plus zero. For red and white, you can attach, 
You can unattach the Sunforger, search your library for red or white instant card for converted mana cost four or less, cast that card without paying its mana cost, and then shuffle your library. So we're talking about the removal spells that we have available here. Now, that's just sweet right there. Then we have Commander's Plate. We're only playing red and white, so we need protection from blue, green, and black. And this is a one-drop equipment. Equip creature gets plus three, plus three, and protection from each color that's not in your commander's I color identity. So for Arden, um, you can even just put, uh, I believe it's just white? I don't know. But that's just because it's partner. I'm not sure how the rules work on that. But equip uh, it, you can equip this commander for three, but if you equip a creature for it, it's just five. Woo, that was hard to say for some reason. Seraphic Greatsword is our next card. It's a equipped creature. gets a plus two, plus two. It's a two drop. Whenever a equipped creature attacks the player with the most life or tied for the most life, you're going to create a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token that's tapped and attacking that player. Then we have Shadow Spear. This is a sweet, pretty sweet uh, card right here. Equipped creature gets a plus one, plus one, has trample and lifelink, and then you can tap one and permanence your opponent's control. Lose hex proven indestructible until the end of the turn. It's a one drop for two equip. Then we have another Kamigawa card, Manriki Gasari. Equip creature has one has a plus one plus two and has tap to destroy target equipment. Equip for one. Now this is in the case that someone wants to be try to be nifty and take take control of one of my equipments. Not happening. I'm destroying that equipment unless it's one of the indestructible ones. So. Now we're on to my favorite cards and the most powerful cards in this deck, and then we'll go on to the big announcements, which include announcing the winner of the six Crimson Vow Blister Packs that we announced, as well as another big announcement. We have our Sword of Feast and Famine, which is a three-drop artifact. Equipped creature gets a plus two, plus two, and has protection from black and green, and whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a, land, a card, and then you untap all lands control. Just, the, you untap all lands control is so devastating. Then we have the Sword of War and Peace. This gives a creature a plus two, plus two, and has protection from red and white. And whenever an equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, Sword of War and Peace deals damage to that player equal to the number of cards in their hand, and you gain one life for each card in your hand. Same thing, e drop three and equip for two. These are the same for all the swords. Sword of Hearth and Home. Of <laughs> Sword of Hearth and Home. It's a same thing, plus two, plus two, but has equipped uh, has protection from green and white. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, exile up to one target creature you own. Then search your library for a basic land card, put both onto the battlefield under the under your control, then shuffle. So if I have any creatures to have any enter the battlefield abilities, this is where I'm going to be using this card like crazy. And then the final card of this uh, deck is the Sword of Truth and Justice, which is my uh, uh, foil my etched foil edition from Modern Horizons. So this one gives a creature plus two plus two and has e protection from white and blue. And whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control, then proliferate. So that is my equipment deck. I hope you guys really like the synergy. And then we're gonna be going. Uh, we're gonna be announcing the winner of our. Last video's giveaway for the last personal deck build. Now, before I announce that winner, I have a pretty big announcement here. It's been something that I've been trying to uh, work, work out exactly how I'm going to be wording this. I've decided in order to help grow this channel and to improve the overall quality of the content, I will be stepping back from doing giveaways weekly for a few months until further notice. Uh, you all have been amazing in su helping support this channel and helping grow the channel, but I felt the r because of this, I felt it's the right thing to do. It is definitely a pleasure to be able to provide you giveaways in addition to the content. I want to do so much more than that, though. So I want to focus on more educational content, such as um, my take on upcoming Magic the Gathering sets, on as well as uh, how to play Magic as well as uh, putting the extra time and energy and money into getting better equipment for the channel altogether so that you guys can have the quality that I truly feel like you deserve. Um, so I, I really hope you all understand. And in regards to ASMR content, um, since these all are technically giveaways that I've been doing for those ASMR deck builds, 
I am debating and creating an entirely new channel purely focused on this where I can share my uh, quiet magic chores such as pricing cards, organizing, uh, shopping for cards or collections, and maybe my own ASMR rendition of personal deck builds. Uh, no giveaways will be in this avenue, but I, pro I, I, will, I promise to provide all the love and effort as I do anything I'm passionate about. And the only thing I'm really passionate about is growing this channel So and, and showing you guys how much I really care. So, um, But I'm still going to be doing this Zendikar Rising giveaway. It doesn't mean I'm stopping giveaways completely. I'm just going to be scaling them back a lot. So if I have extra, if I have some cool extra stuff, you know, once or twice a month, I'm going to do it. It's definitely something that um, I'm, I pride myself in is my generosity. But I hope you guys understand and uh, the different direction I'm going to be taking in this channel. And if you're with me, you're with me. If not, I completely understand. But um, that was the, pretty much the big announcement. And the final announcement here is to announce the winner of the six Crimson Vow Draft boost Blister Packs that I have been saving here for you. So uh, thank you so much for Chicken... Uh, thank you so much, Chicken Wing Leaf. Congratulations. You have a freaking awesome name, by the way. Um, I really like that name. That's pretty funny. Uh, but yes, uh, please, again, everyone, you guys know the rules to, uh, on how to enter the Zendikar Rising set booster box giveaway. And yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Feel free to let me know how you feel in the comments. I end my turn. I pass.